Hey, my name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Chandler, Arizona. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. I've been excited about today's episode because this is a subject that has been near and dear to my heart for since I started practicing medicine. You know, it's about the liver, and, and the liver is an important organ in our body. It just is. It plays such a role in so many areas of health. I want to focus in on your liver enzymes and liver detoxification and the importance of it and diet. Some little dietary advice from me to you. So what is it that I'm going to talk about? What is this about? You know, the liver is responsible for filtering out toxins in your body, metabolic waste. Every day, your body makes waste. Every cell in your body is constantly making waste. And you think about it. I love this analogy. Um, if my patients are watching this, I know some of you do. It's like, you're like, yeah, I hear you use that same story. I got to come up with new stories sometimes. I got to work on my, my game. But I said, <laughs> so in your neighborhood, it's trash day. You put the trash out. And the garbage man comes or garbage person comes and they pick it up and they throw it in there and they, you know, take it to the, the dump and process it from there. It's like that with your cells. Your cells put a metabolic waste out, circulation takes it, brings it to the liver to get processed out. That's how this whole thing works. And we know your liver's doing a good job on my end as a doctor because I look at the liver enzymes as one of my indicators how the system's doing a detox. Are you getting rid of the metabolic waste you should be getting rid of? Is your liver staying ahead of it? There's certain ways of looking at it. My favorite liver, something called liver transaminases, and that's uh, um, ALT and AST, uh, which are both the, the, the two primary ones. There's others involved as well, but you know, alanine, alanine aminotransferase and, and aspartate aminotransferase are the two big ones I, I peek at. So when your body is making normal waste, your liver enzymes, average 10 to 20 on a lab, 25. I always like to see people between 10 and 20. The range goes up to 40 and sometimes I think even 50, depending on the lab company running it. But I like 10 to 20. The liver is responsible for filtering out all this metabolic waste. And, and if your liver wasn't doing a good job, say, say your liver stopped working, metabolic waste would build up within the body and you would see it like trash building out on the street around your neighborhood. Over time, the trash keeps building up. There's gonna become more rodents in there. There's gonna be like pests. There's gonna be all kinds of like stuff that you don't want, like vermin. It's not safe. Your neighborhood's gonna become unhealthy pretty fast because you're building up and you're starting to drown in your own junk, right? So the liver is important to keep everything running clean. So we want that. When the liver's not doing its job, you see neurological deficits. You people don't, we don't think very clearly. You see uh, um, inflammatory conditions start to happen in joints. It's just overall, we don't have the same quality of life if the liver's allowed to be out of range. Now, liver enzymes go out of range when we have pathology, yes. So if someone comes into clinic and it's hepatitis, I'm not talking about that today, but if they have hepatitis, their liver enzymes will be elevated, yes. If someone comes into clinic, they're an alcoholic, their liver enzymes will be elevated, yes. If someone's uh, abusing you know, um, pain medicines like uh, acetaminophen, things like that, you're gonna see that elevated, yes. There are reasons why liver enzymes get elevated due to things we're consuming um, and taking as medications, that's important, but I wanna talk more about diet and junk food. Fast food specifically, when people consume fast food, that causes liver enzymes to elevate. And what that means in those cases, that the liver is under duress. Not only is your liver processing the trash from the neighborhood, but you're just dumping trash on it, on top of it excessively, in addition to what your body's normally making on a cellular level. You're giving other metabolic waste. And hear me out here. When you eat things that are not natural, when you eat things that are synthetic, we eat things that have a chemical nature, those things, your liver has to look at it and say, you don't belong here. It has to recognize it, it has to acknowledge it, and it has to basically detoxify it. There's several steps. That's two primary steps, to be honest with you. And, and your liver goes through those steps to eliminate that trash. And if you keep on hitting your liver with that trash, your liver gets backed up and doesn't take care of all the waste it's supposed to. And then the waste builds up. Studies are very clear, and my experience as a physician, I've seen it, and it's true. When people eat fast food, their liver enzymes become elevated. They go from 10 to 20, which is beautiful, up to higher levels, even 40 and 50. Now, when someone comes to clinic of 40, 50, 60 for their liver enzymes, that's not enough for us to really lose a lot of sleep. You know, 
it's not, you know, you go to a regular primary care or you go to, a, you know, any other gastroenterologist, anybody who specializes in that area, they'll say to you, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. They won't even really bother with it. They won't talk to it very much. It isn't until it hits a, a real high threshold for a period of time. They say, okay, this is something. Me as your doctor, anytime it jumps above 20, <laughs> I'm going to be on you. And if any of my patients, again, are watching this, they'll admit that's true. I do. I get on them and I say, we don't have the same quality of life if we leave these liver enzymes elevated. We don't have the same quality of life. So when you eat that type of diet, there are consequences. And I like to be able to show them what those consequences are. As I mentioned earlier in this episode, when you consume these types of foods that are difficult for your body to process, again, fast food, junk food, the real impact on your joints, it leads to osteoarthritic changes. There's enough studies associating that together. It leads to cognitive decline. You don't think as clearly. That's another one that's been proven. It ages us. It, it, it compromises our long-term quality of life. When a patient presents to my clinic and they have mildly elevated liver enzymes, even above 30, okay? And, I, and it's not high enough for me to think it's hepatitis. Of course, I'm going to screen out all the other bad things. I always do, part of who I am. But even if someone comes in between 30 and 40, I'm going to nag them. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to tell them, look, we need to change your diet. We need to improve it here and here. I may even recommend a supplement. There's some supplements that are beneficial. Uh, milk thistle, it's a fact. It's a fact. Milk thistle does help. Uh, and I, I'm not associated with this company at all, but Gaia Herbs, uh, G-A-I-A, -A, Gaia Herbs, has a great milk thistle products. So I've used that with patients. I've seen that help. But just giving them a liver detox alone is not enough. That's lazy medicine. We need to also make sure we do good work with their diet, making sure they have adequate levels of micronutrition, antioxidants. You want to make sure they're eating cruciferous vegetables. Uh, uh, that's going to be broccoli. It's going to be cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. These sorts of things do enhance that liver detoxification pathway and improve liver function. But all of those things are not as important as removing the original cause. When you eat things that are been treated synthetically, a lot of times what they're putting in there is, is artificial preserving agents. They're, they're basically artificial antioxidants to prevent free radical damage of the proteins in the foods that's in front of you. But they're not naturally occurring <laughs> compounds. And your liver's like, I don't get you. <laughs> that's to figure it out. And that's the problem with it. It's like a Rubik's Cube. You're trying to figure out how to like solve it. Your liver has to Rubik's Cube up all those weird things you're putting in there. Sometimes it's companies trying to do shortcut to cooking and they're gonna use artificial flavoring agents. You know, why don't you just prepare the food correctly so you get the right, correct flavors? You know, this is, there's all these different ways. I mean, there's an argument about MSG. I'm gonna come down on the side of MSG is, is ghetto. And MSG is a shortcut that they put into food in order to avoid creating the proper flavor profile by cooking it the correct way. It's fast to make MSG, make something taste a certain way with MSG. I'm not a fan of it. I don't believe in MSG being a good thing at all. That's just me. I think it's a chemical. I think you create, and this term is called umami, which means, you know, the, the, the um, savory type flavors. You, know, you want to have something like that. You can do that other ways of doing that, okay? You don't need MSG. So a lot of times these companies will be lazy in how they manufacture your food, and they're looking more for a paycheck or excuse me, a dollar sign. They're looking for money on the other end of it. And that's why they're throwing it in there because it's faster, cheaper, and easier for them to make this garbage food and you'll eat it without knowing it's doing this harm to you. That's me on a soapbox. At the end of the day, my advice is the same as every doctor's usually is. Try not to eat fast food. Try not to eat junk food. Try not to eat food that have synthetic compounds in them. I know it's not always possible. I live in this world with you. I know, I know, I know. So when you do get cornered and you got to have those things, there's options. You know, make sure the rest of your diet is always really good and you're taking good care of your diet. Make sure that you're eating broccoli, cruciferous vegetables, you know, like, like the others as I mentioned, the cabbage. Cabbage is a great one. And, and if you do take a supplement, you know, Gaia, I've just, again, I've 20 years now I've been using that supplement. I, I have no financial association with them, but I personally like them. Uh, they have these gel caps that work really well. And you can buy them at every health food store in the States. It's pretty cool. And if you do take those things, always make sure you run your labs to make sure they're doing something because it's, you know, the benefit. You don't want to just take something that's going to help you. You want to always make sure you're doing a good job with it. Okay, that was a lot. I hope that helps. Please like, share, and subscribe because we love doing this and it matters and we will keep doing it. Your comments also help drive the direction of the podcast. 
We will see you again at the next episode.